Today we're going to show you how to use your GHL doser for automatic water change purposes when connected to a Profilux 4 controller. We'll do this using the GHL Connect app. For this setup, you will need to have your GHL doser already connected and assigned to your P4 controller. You'll also need two available dosing pump heads, any combination of two GHL sensors, either float or optical, and lastly, a matching set of brackets and assembly rod for positioning the two sensors in your sump. If you're planning to connect both sensors to a single level port on your P4, you'll also need a PLLY splitter cable. To get started, connect the GHL float or optical sensor to an available level port on your P4. Be sure to take note what color port on the P4 you are connecting the sensors to. If you connect one or both sensors to the purple port, it is connected to level inputs 1 and 2. If one or both are connected to the green port, it is connected to level inputs 3 and 4. If you are connecting these sensors to an expansion card, the level port numbering will continue beyond level 3 and 4. For example, if you have a PLM 4 level expansion card, the level numbering would be 5 and 6 for one port and 7 and 8 for the second port. Since there are two sensors involved in this setup, you can either connect each sensor to its own port directly on the P4, or you can use a PLLY splitter cable and connect both sensors to a single level port on your P4. If you choose to connect a single sensor directly to the level port without a splitter cable, the level sensor numbering will automatically be assigned to the first number of that port. In other words, if you were to connect one sensor directly to the level 1 and 2 port, the sensor would automatically be assigned as level sensor number 1. Connecting a sensor directly to level 3 and 4 would automatically assign it as level sensor number 3. If you choose to use a splitter cable, the level sensor numbering will automatically be assigned to the first and second number of that level port. For example, Connecting two sensors to the level 1 and 2 port would make one end of the splitter cable level sensor number 1 and the other end level sensor number 2. Once you have the sensors connected, open up the GHL Connect app and connect to your Profilux. From the dashboard, press the menu icon. Select Control, then select Level. Choose an unused control circuit. In the General Settings section, press Operation Mode and select the desired water change function. Select Water Change if you wish to use the standard water change function. With this option, sensor number 1 is the maximum fill point and sensor number 2 is the drain point. When a water change begins, the assigned drain pump will begin removing water from your system until it reaches sensor number 2. At that moment, the drain pump will turn off and the fill pump will turn on. This fill pump will then stay on until the water level reaches sensor number 1 at the maximum fill point. The second water change option is the ATO and water change function. With this option, the upper sensor will become responsible for managing both ATO and water change tasks. For ATO purposes, this ATO function will turn on only when the water level drops below the upper sensor. When a water change task begins, the ATO function will be disabled until the water change is completed. Once that's done, type in a description for this task. The next step will be to set the desired maximum on time. This max on time feature is the failsafe for this function. If for any reason the assigned sensors do not respond within the allowed time, the failsafe will automatically shut down the function to prevent either an overflow or too much water being taken out. For example, by setting this feature to 5 minutes, you allow the water change task to run for up to 5 minutes. If this time limit expires, the Profilux will trigger the failsafe and activate an alarm. When an alarm is activated, the GHL logo LED indicator lights will begin flashing red. For this feature, we recommend you enter a time that gives the assigned pumps enough time to complete the water change task. Once the max on time is set, choose if you'd like to have the alarm automatically reset after the failsafe has been triggered. 
With this option selected, the alarm will automatically be reset once the water change sensors detect normal water level. For those who selected the ATO and water change function, take a look at the ATO section and select if you'd like to have the ATO function always on. If you would prefer to run the ATO on certain days or times, disable this option and select the timer number that will be responsible for managing the on-off times of this function. The next step will be to select the timer number that will be responsible for activating the water change. To do that, select the timer function that is not being used by any other device or task. Next, select the sensor numbers that will be used for this task. For example, if you have both sensors connected to the level 1 and 2 port with a splitter cable, select 1 and 2. If connected to the level 3 and 4 port, select 3 and 4. If you connected each sensor to its own separate level port, select the first sensor number that belongs to the respective port. For example, a single sensor connected to level 1 and 2 is assigned as sensor number 1. A single sensor connected to level 3 and 4 is assigned as sensor number 3. Once that's done, press save, then press the back arrow icon at the top left of your screen. If you wish to set a specific reaction time for your water change sensors, you can do so by selecting the sensors tab. Here you will be able to set a delayed reaction time for your sensors. By default, all sensors are set to react after one second. In this same page, you can also identify which water change sensor is the upper sensor and which is the lower. If you toggle those sensors, you will see an X mark disappear and reappear. The next step will be to go to the timer function you assigned to the water change task. Press the menu icon, press the back arrow, select processes. Select the timer number you used when you set up the water change function. If you assigned timer 1 to this task, you would go to the timer 1 settings page. If you chose timer 2 for this task, you'd go to the timer 2 settings page. From here, select the switch mode tab and set the switch mode to event start. Add a description for this task. We're going to call it water change. Press save, then press the schedule tab. On this page, you can now specify at what time you would like the water change task to begin. Press add, then specify the water change start time. When you're done, press add. Your start time will now be added to the list. If you'd like to do multiple water changes throughout the day, just press the add button again and set the starting time. Next. Select the days you'd like to run this water change task. If you'd like to run it every day, either select all the boxes here or select the day intervals tab and set the repeat field to one. If you'd like to do a water change every two or three days, enter two for every two days or three for every three days. Once that's done, press save. The days and times of the water change have now been set up. The next step will be to assign the water change task to the non-physical outlets which will be responsible for turning the dosing pump heads on and off. Press the back arrow, press the menu icon, and select switch channels. Select a non-physical outlet which is not being used. For example, if you have one power bar assigned to sockets 1 through 6, select 7. If you have two power bars located on sockets 1 through 12, select 13. Be sure to take note what number switch channel you are selecting because you will need to know that info when you assign the dosing pumps to the water change task. Type in a description for this switch channel. We're going to name this one water change drain. Set the function to drain water. The number here corresponds to the control circuit number you used when you created the water change function. For example, since we used control circuit number 1, we would select 1. If we had used control circuit number 2, we would have selected 2. Press save, then press the back arrow. 
Select another non-physical outlet. Type in a description. We're naming this one AWC Fill. Set the function to Fill Water AWC only. Select the same control circuit number you used to create the water change function. When you're done, press Save, then press the back arrow. For those who had selected the ATO and water change function, select the outlet that will have your ATO pump connected to it. If you have a normal ATO pump connected to your power bar outlet, select that outlet. If you have a dosing pump head that you'd like to use for ATO purposes, select a non-physical outlet. Type in a description and set the function to fill water ATO only. Select the same control circuit number you used earlier, then press save. The final step will be to assign which dosing pump heads will react to the water change task. Press the menu icon and select dosing pumps. Select the pump you want to use for the water change drain task. Type in a description for this pump. Enable the option Switch Off Level Monitoring. Scroll to the bottom of the page and set the pump to react to a switch channel. Select the switch channel number where you have the drain task assigned. Since we assigned this task on switch channel number 7, we're going to set this pump to 7 so that it can become the pump responsible for draining water from the tank. Once that's done, press save. Press the back arrow, then select the pump you want to use for the water change filling task. Type in a description for this pump. If you'd like to keep track of the fluid levels in your water change reservoir, leave this section as is. If you'd like to switch off this feature, select this option. If you're keeping track of your water change fluid levels, type in the capacity of your container. The minimum field is the threshold for when an alarm should be triggered. If you'd like to trigger an alarm when the fluid level drops below the minimum number, activate the feature here. Scroll to the bottom of the page and set the pump to react to a switch channel. Select the switch channel number where you have the fill task assigned. Since we assigned this task on switch channel number 8, we're going to set this pump to 8 so that it can become the pump responsible for filling the tank with new water. Press save and your auto water change setup will be complete. For those who wish to use their dosing pump for ATO, your last step will be to select the dosing pump you want to use for ATO purposes. Configure the container settings, then set the pump to react to a switch channel. Select the switch channel number where you have the ATO task assigned. Once you're done, press save. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about this video or any GHL product, feel free to contact us on any one of our support channels. If you'd like to receive notifications when we release new videos, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, folks, take care.